Lee. My name is Lee. Well, I decided to upload this video because I wanted I've wanted to upload a video that introduces um inter interesting uh, language effects or ideas. So, what I'm going to introduce for this video is gonna be the like language related information that I have collected so far. And first I want to talk about Chinese language. Well I am not Chinese language speaker, but I have found I found Chinese language interesting for some reasons. First in that Chinese language does not have a, a tense frame. Uh, let's say in English, there's a tense frame such as past, present, and future. So to show time pre time frame, the end uh, of verb is inflected. For example, let's say there is a agree. The verb agree. Then for its past, I need to add ed at the end of the word. So it's going to be agreed. And for its present, it's just agree. And for its future, it's gonna be will, um, will agree. Well, this is not inflectional. So only past it uh, inflected for that verb. So anyway, the point is to show tense to show tense frame. Uh, the en the verb ending should be inflected in many languages, including including uh, English. And well, I'm a, I'm bilingual, and I know how how to use a Korean. And in Korean language, uh, Korean lang Korean verb is also inflected. Uh, to show like a past or present or future, but Chinese language is not like that. So I found that this interesting. So here's what I found. For example, let's say there's a word, um, uh, to eat. Um, and that is chi. I don't know how to pronounce it perfectly because I don't know much about Chinese four tones. So I don't know that it's correct or not, but anyway, chi. And according to the article that describes about the Chinese uh, tense less language, it says that chi, that one Chinese character, um, can be used for past, present, and future. So which is. Oh my god for me so then my question is then how can you guys can express a time concept well since you guys are a human being you need to express uh, extra concepts such as a time then uh, the verb ending does not is not inflected for time tense then how can you express it so according to that article that I read about the lang the Chinese language, it says um, sometimes it depends on um, mood, atmosphere, or uh, for past, uh, the new one character it's added at the beginning of a sentence. So that's a uh, wow. That's a uh, that's totally new way of uh, making tense. Um, making tent so that was really interesting I'm not sure uh, that uh, that same that same thing happens in Japanese or not but I'm probably sure that Japanese as well because uh, because hmm because I don't know I think it, it because it looks similar and Japanese language uh, also used in some of some Chinese characters, so I should, uh, they they do too. Hmm, I don't know. So anyway, that was the first uh 
first interesting language fact for me. And the second one, it's about Korean language. So what was interesting is in using Korean language, um, what, when I use English for the speakers to be kind for the hearers, for audience, what's the most kind uh, way to deliver their words? It's articulate, to art articulating clearly so that uh, the listener can understand my words uh, easily. But according to the research about Korean language in terms of uh, uh, its politeness for like a social like a style, I don't know. It says a uh, politeness can be uh, expressed uh, by by this articulating articulating less clearly which is weird but like the point is think about it I think that's kind of weird because like how can uh, articulating less clearly can be polite because I uh, I have what I want to say and I want the hearer to understand my words then uh, for them, I need to articulate clearly for their understanding. That is, if I say like less clearly, like vaguely and with like a lower voice, I don't think that is a polite, that is a sign of politeness. That is, a, I think, a sign of like kind of avoidance. It's not a, a politeness. It's a sign of avoidance because... Here is, here is my words, and I want you to understand. I want to listen to my words, but then how the hearer can understand my words if I do not say clearly. So I think that concept is kind of weird, but instead, it's, here's my interpretation about that. I don't think that is a politeness, but it's a kind of a tension. It's made out of a tension between the speaker and the hearer because of the like, invisible um, social hierarchy because because uh, many Asian culture it's based on heavy hierarchy um, like for example in Korean um, in Korean culture I think there is a like invisible tension between interlocutors because of a social status or age, age is a very, very heavy thing in Korean culture. If, for example, like a day called, uh, day called friend, if you are like 23 and the uh, speaker and the person that they are talking with is also 23, then they can say they're friends. But if they talking, uh, if they are talking with people whose age is like 24, then they do not say, they do not call them like a friend, which is weird. So that kind of hierarchical tension uh, made them not uh, less articulate, which is not good because think about it. One, like a two, to express one's individuality, Language is very important. Saying having ideas and um, making um, uh, good sentences and articul articulating them clearly. It's how uh, how uh, language um, should be used, I assume, to, ex to deliver their ideas. But because of that hierarchy, uh, that um, language protection, or how can I say, that language usage is uh, is um, it's uh, it's uh, cannot be made well. So I don't, I cannot say that that is a good thing. So 
if they want to really be polite and respect, want to respect uh, each other, then they need to articulate clear clearly so that the listener can understand. I think that is that is a more a uh, more concept of respect. That is, and that is not a polite thing, N not at all, from my perspective. So that was the uh, second thing. And the third information that I found interesting was linguistic re relativity. And for another time, another another time for that was like Sapiro Whorf theory. I can't remember exactly the its full name. But the concept of it was um is a theory that explains that language shapes how one think. More than a uh, thought shaped language. Well, I think that is kind of true. Kind of true. Because that's what's happened on me. Because when I use this language and when I use another language, which is more Asian language. What is more Asian language? I mean, I'm going to say like one of Asian languages. Then like the way I think like changes dramatically different it's like in english a concept of i is very strong concept of i and like my possession it's like i can feel that like kind of territory territory i'm like a, surrounded by um surrounded by like because I'm like my boundary, my privacy. Well, in in Asian languages that I use, other Asian languages that I use, uh, the concept of I still exists, but kind of very weak, but more like into a concept of we. Or sometimes when I use Korean language, um, sometimes uh, I... The word I is not needed to be uh, said. But in Korean language, subject is not necessary. So like in language performance, uh, how can I say it? Like language performance, the agent, the agent, it's sometimes omitted. It's not necessary. So, in case I is not uh, said, then the, the listener can interpret that performance, action performance, as a, as a for we, or by we, or of we. So, so... In other words, the ownership of performance uh, is like a, it's vague. It's not like distinct. It's not like my action, your action, and our action, but just un, just like un, like consciously, or like just it's the ownership of performance is like a understood as our action instead of like my action uh, unless it is expressed as a my uh, action so it is kind of weird and I think that's uh, personally I think like that's uh, that's it's likely to lead more collectivistic movement because of that language and in that sense uh, in that sense uh, that kind of language usage um, can also explain in 
linguistic relativity. But I'm not. I'm not going to say that only linguistic relativity is true because what I experience is, it's, it's also, uh, was, shape uh, thoughts also shaped how I speak. To illustrate that, here's what I experience. Well, I use English for, for, um, for many years. I'm um, not many years. I mean, like uh, I've used English, and and for the first few months, um, of. Living in Korea ever since I got back from the states because I was uh, I was I studied there. Um, I've used English continuously, and I can feel that like the way I think it's very different from uh, the way uh, uh, the way other uh, Korean language speakers use. I think. But like as time have gone by, like the environment, that environment that I'm surrounded by affects on how I think, and based on how I think, the way how I the way I talk has been also affected by that. So there's like a trend, like a there's like a. How can I say? There's a stage, st stage that um, language affects how I think. It's very strong, but at the same time, thoughts affect how I say. It's also strong. So there's a stage, I think. So it's a matter of time. I don't. I'm not gonna say there's only okay. So linguistic relativity is only true, or like a sheep uh, or thoughts affect how I speak is. Only true. I think just this is a matter of time. So there's a, like a differentiation, like this. So, yep. So, okay. Well, it's seventy minutes. So so far, I've introduced three interesting facts and ideas about uh, language stuff. So I'm going to stop here for a while. St I stop it. Call this a video, and then I'll move on into another video. And I'm going to explain more about language, interesting language fact and ideas on that video.